Avast, you scallywags! Oi, mateys! Welcome to this week's episode of Real World Pirate History, as told by your old pal, Coffin Graham. And today we got a real treat for ya. Another student of the pirate legend, Benjamin Hornigold. The one, the only, Charles Vane. Now, little is known of Vane's early life. He lived in Port Royal before becoming a pirate, but he was most likely not born there. Vane worked with Henry Jennings during Jennings' attack on the salvage camp at the wrecked Spanish 1715 treasure fleet. The same treasure fleet wreck that helped launch Nassau onto the forefront of pirate life. Vane first operated as an independent captain in the summer of 1717, but by the winter of that year he was one of the leaders of the pirates operating out of Nassau. When word reached the pirates that King George I of Great Britain had extended an offer of pardon to all pirates who wished surrender, Vane led the pirates who opposed taking the pardon. On February 23rd, 1718, Captain Vincent Pierce arrived at Nassau in the HMS Phoenix in an attempt to get the pirates of the island to surrender. Vane was captured along with his sloop, the Lark. However, his teacher, Benjamin Hornigold, and others urged Pierce to release Vane as a show of good faith, which he did. Vane afterwards took the king's pardon, but on 21 of March, Vane and his men, including the two pirates Edward England and Calico Jack Rackham, turned pirate again. Vane sailed back to Nassau and harassed Pierce repeatedly, recapturing the Lark. Vane left Nassau on the 4th of April, four days after Pierce left the HMS Phoenix and Nassau was again controlled by the pirates. After leaving Nassau, Vane raided ships around the Bahamas. He gained a reputation for cruelty. He and his crew would often beat or torture captured sailors to force them to surrender their valuables. Around this time, Vane's crew renamed the Lark to the Ranger. Vane cruised again in May and June, capturing, among other ships, a 20-gun French ship that became Vane's new flagship. Vane was back at Nassau on the 22nd of July, 1718, when Woods Rogers reached Nassau to take office as the new governor. Rogers' ships trapped Vane in the harbor. Vane's ship was too large to pass one of the two harbor's entrances, and the other was blocked by Rogers' fleet. That night, Vane turned the French ship into a fire ship, setting it on fire and sailing it towards Rogers' ships. The fire ship failed to damage any of Rogers' fleet except one but the ships were forced to pull away, unblocking the channel. Vane had commandeered a small 24-gun sloop, the Catherine, and escaped to the smaller entrance as Roger's ships returned. Vane took ships off the Bahamas in July, working with Charles Yeats, the original captain of the Catherine. A brigantine that Vane captured became his new flagship. In August, he sailed to Charleston and took eight ships there. After seizing a slave ship, he put the slave aboard Yeats' ship, and Yeats sailed off with the slaves to surrender the governor of South Carolina in exchange for a pardon. The merchants of Charleston outfitted two sloops to hunt Vane, under the command of William Rett. Rett failed to find Vane, but his ships located and captured the pirate Steed Bonnet instead. In August, Vane careened his ship near Abaco, where his accomplice Nicholas Woodall smuggled him supplies and ammunition. Vane returned to Nassau in September to marry, threatening to retake the city. In October, Vane sailed for Okaroke Inlet and met with Blackbeard, perhaps attempting to convince Blackbeard to join forces with him. The two crews celebrated for several days, but split up afterwards. In October, Vane raided Eleuthera, carrying away liquor and livestock. On 23rd November, Vane spotted a large frigate, but when he hoisted the Jolly Roger, the frigate replied by raising a French naval ensign and opening fire. Vane's brigantine and sloop were outgunned, and he ordered a retreat. Vane's crew saw this as an act of cowardice. He was voted out of command in favor of Jack Rackham. Vane and 16 others who supported him, including his first mate Robert Deal, were put on the sloop and separated. Vane sailed to the Bay Islands, capturing sloops along the way, one of which Deal took command of. In February of 1719, Vane and Deal were caught in a hurricane and separated. Vane was wrecked on an uninhabited island. When English ships arrived to collect water near the island, Vane tried to join one of the crews under a false name. He was recognized, though, by an old acquaintance and arrested. Vane was taken to Spanish Town, Jamaica, and held in prison for some time. On March 22nd of 1721, he was tried for piracy and found guilty. Vane learned the deal had also been captured, tried, convicted, and hanged only a few months earlier. Vane was sentenced to death 
On 29th March, he was hanged at Gallows Point in Point Royal, and his corpse was hung in chains at Gun K. All right, mateys, that be the tale of Charles Vane, one of the most persistent and unwavering pirates to have ever sailed the West Indies. What do you think of his tale? Any ideas for who to cover next? Let old Grim know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next week for another episode of Real World Pirate History. Until then, mateys, I've been Captain Grim of the Antelope, and I'll see you out there upon the Sultan Seas, aye?